And welcome back to a special numbers edition of Apple A Day. I'm continuing my series of short tutorials on date and time functions in Apple Numbers. Today's episode is all about date diff. The purpose of this function is to return the difference between two dates. And you can get that difference in either days, months, or years. As you can see, I'm just starting off with a blank numbers document. Clicking on any cell, I'm going to type in the equal sign to bring up the formula editor. And then I'm going to type in date diff and press return. And that will give me a list of all of the parameters used by this function. And as you can see, it takes in three parameters, the start date, the end date, and something called calc method, short for calculation method. So what date diff does is it subtracts the start date from the end date and provides that difference in the result. And as I already said, that difference can either be days, months, or years. And it's the calc method parameter that determines the type of value to return. So if I click on the drop down menu, it shows me a D for days, an M for month, and a Y for years. These other three I'll cover a little bit later in this tutorial. So let's try it. I'm going to type in today's date. And in the past tutorial for the date function, I used a year, month, day format. I'll switch that to month, day, year right now. The dates need to be entered in quotes. So type shift quote to get that double quote. And I'm going to type in February 11th, 2023. I'm going to close the quote and press tab to go to the next parameter, which is the end date. And I'll put in Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2023. Then to choose the calc method, simply click on the drop down arrow and choose the desired method. Um, I want to know the number of days, so I'll select D for days. And if I press return, we get the results and we see three for the number of days between now and Valentine's Day. And if you look over at the cell properties, you can see that the function returns a numeric value. One thing to note is that the end date must be after the start date. So in this example, if I were to reverse these dates, you'd get an error. I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to change the start date to the 14th and the end date to the 11th. And when I press return, you'll see that numbers displays a red alert icon. Clicking on the icon will display the cause of the error. It's a little bit, you know, in programmer language, um, referring to the parameters as arguments. And it says argument one must be no bigger than argument two, which is exactly what the problem is. So if I double click on that, you know, we can fix that and put it back to the way it was. And it's back to three. So next, I want to show how you would use this function in formulas uh, for other cells that hold dates. So I'm just going to delete this. So in the first column, I'm going to enter in several start dates. And then in the second column, I'm going to type in a series of end dates. And in an effort to demonstrate a real world example, I'll put in some titles here as well. The first column should be date started. And the second column I'll call date due. And the third column will be total days. So in the first cell of the third column, I'm going to type in equals and date diff and press return. And for the start date, I'll select the first cell under the date started column and press tab to move to the end date. And for that, I'll select the first cell under date due. And for the calc method, I'll click on it and choose days again and press return. Then I'll copy that cell into each row by selecting it and pressing Command C and then moving to each cell underneath it and pasting it in using Command V. So that shows you the total number of days that each one of these projects was allowed. But what if you wanted to know the number of days remaining from the current date? That's actually really easy to do using another function called now, which returns the current date. Uh, let's try it. I'll add a title to the fourth column and call it days remaining. And in the first cell of that column, I'll type in equals date diff and press return. And for the start date, I'm going to type in the word now and press return. So now is a built in function in numbers, which returns the current date and time. It doesn't take any parameters. So I'm just going to press tab and move on to end date. And for that, I'm just going to select the first cell under date due. And again, for the calc method, I'm going to choose days and press return. And now we see we've got 39 days remaining, and that's 39 days from today, which is February 11th, until March 22nd. I'm going to copy this, just like before, into each row underneath. And you can see that the days remaining is always less than the total days, because the start date was always prior to the current date of February 11th. Also, it shows you more relevant information. So if I were to save this spreadsheet and then open it up tomorrow or the next day, 
we would see that the number of days remaining would actually be less. So for instance, 39 days today, I open this up tomorrow, it would say 38. Okay, so let's go over the rest of the calc methods. So I'm gonna double click the formula in the first cell under total days, and I'm gonna change the calc method from D to M for months and press return. I'll copy this into the other rows. And I'm also gonna change the title from total days to total months. Now notice that the numbers are integers or whole numbers. Date diff does not return fractional values. Even though it could be five and a half months, it's only gonna show five. And the number five will represent a full month. If it's five months and 29 days, the total months returned by that function is still gonna say five. It does not round up. So take the first row example. Five full months would be from October 15th to March 15th, but this is March 22nd. So it's actually five months and seven days. But this value here is rounded down to five months. In the second row, it's nearly six months. It's October 19th all the way up to March 18th. It's one day shy of six months, and it still shows it as five months. If I change this to 419, you'll see the total months jump up to six. So that's how date diff works with months. Now let's change it to years. I'm gonna double click on the formula again, and in the calc method property, I'm gonna change that to year, press return, and once again, copy this into each cell. And just like with months, this is not a fractional value. It will only count full years. So the dates actually have to be 12 months apart at least before it can even show one full year. So there's three more calc method options available and they can be a little confusing. So I'm gonna start with the first one and it's called MD. Once again, I'll type in equals date diff and press return. I'm gonna select the same start and end dates. So select date started, press tab and press date due for the end date. And then for calc method, I'm gonna choose MD and press return. So what this does is it counts the number of days between the start and end date, but it ignores the month and the year. It uses the start date month as the month for both dates. So in this example, there is only seven days between the 15th and the 22nd. So I'm gonna copy this to other rows. In the second example, both days are on the 19th. So the day difference is zero. I'm actually gonna enter some additional dates in order to show this a little clearer. So in the first column, I'm gonna put in December 10th, 2022, and February 10th, 2023. And in the second column, or the date due column, I'm gonna put in February 9th, 2023, and March 7th, 2023. And then I'm gonna apply that formula to those two new rows. So the difference between these two ranges is that the first month has 31 days and the second month has 28 days. And in the second example, the start date has 28 days and the end date has 31. So this pair of dates are 30 days apart. And the way it works is it counts up from the start date until it reaches the day of the month of the end date. Um, in this case, it reaches the end of the month first and then counts up from that point until it hits the target day. So December 10th to December 31st, is 21 days. Then you add nine more days because it's the ninth of the month in the end date. So that adds up to 30 days, which is what is calculated. And in the next example, we count up from February 10th to the 28th, which is 18 days, and then add seven more days to March 7th, which gives us 25 days, which is what we have. I do have an example at the end of this section that will demonstrate a pretty good use case for this calc method option. But moving on, let's do the Y M option. I'm gonna change this to YM. I'm gonna double click on the first cell so I can edit the formula. And in the calc method parameter, I'm gonna change that to YM. This option shows the difference in whole months, but the year is ignored. So it will only ever give you a result between zero and 11. So let's apply this to the other rows. In this first example, which starts in October, it counts the months to the end of the year and then counts up from there, just like the MD option worked. So we see that it's October and then you have November and December, so that's two months, and then January, February, and March, which is a total of five months. This third option starts in November. So if we count up, that gives us one month for December and then seven more months because it's the seventh month and the end date. So that should add up to eight months, but it only shows seven, so why is that? 
That's because the last month is not a whole month. It goes from the 21st to the 12th, which is obviously before the 21st. So that month does not get counted. So if I were to change this date to July 21st, 2024, you can see that the number of months goes up from seven to eight. Dropping this down to 720, 2024, drops that number of months back to seven because we're one day shy of a full month. And the last option is YD. This is similar to MD, except that only the year is ignored, not the year and the months. So it's counting the number of days between the dates, ignoring the year. So I'm going to double click the cell again to edit the formula. And I'm going to change the calc method to YD. Press return and select it and copy it into all of the rows. I'm actually going to add in one more set of dates just to make this a little bit clearer. So again, this counts the number of days between two dates and ignoring the year. So the range of numbers that you should see would be between 0 and 364. I guess maybe 365 if you had a leap year. So in this last example that I added, you can see that the number of days is 3, returned by date diff. And if you look at the date range, it's from December 30th. So we got 31, and that's the end of the year. Then it goes to January 1st and then January 2nd. So that's a total of three days. Even though these two dates are three years apart, it doesn't matter. It just goes by the days. So the last thing I want to show you in this tutorial is a real world example of when you would use these other calc methods. So let's say I wanted to show you the breakdown of time between two dates, but break it down into years, months, and days. So this example is pulled right out of the numbers documentation, and I think it's a really good example, so that's why I'm going to show it. So we're going to edit it in this column here. I'm going to change days remaining to just say remaining. And I'm also going to delete all the formulas that we already created in that column. Okay, in the first row, I'm going to start by typing equals date diff and return again. And for the start date, I'm going to use the now function like we used before. So I'm typing now and return and then tab to get to the end date. And to the end date, I'm going to select the corresponding due date for that row. And in the calc method, I'm going to select Y for years. And instead of pressing return, I'm going to go to the end of the formula and press the space bar and and for the ampersand. And I showed you this in the last tutorial when we went over the date formula and how the ampersand symbol is used to connect multiple pieces of text together. So again, so I typed in the ampersand and I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to do shift quote to get a double quote. And I'm going to do another space and type in the word years and then a comma and then another space, and I'm going to close those quotes. So basically, what it's going to show me is the date difference in years, and spell it out with the word years right after that number. And then after years, I want to show months. So I'm going to press the space bar again, and the ampersand again, because I'm adding one more piece of text. And the next piece of text is another date diff function. So type in date diff and return. And the start date, once again, I'm going to type in now, and press return, and tab. And the end date, again, I'm going to use the same due date. But this time, the calc method, we want to show the number of months. So I'm going to select YM for the number of months. And this is only showing me the months that are going to be between 0 and 11. It's not going to be like 30 months. It's going to break it down. Because the first date diff is giving me the number of years. And this date diff, in a way, it's showing me the remainder. So if you take away the years, what's left is only the months. So at the end of this, I'm going to do another ampersand. And type in shift quote and months. Same thing we did for years. So space, months, comma, space. And the reason we put the spaces in it are simply just to make it easier to read. And you'll see that when we're finished entering this whole formula. And then after that, we have days. So I'm going to do another ampersand and date diff again. Press return. And once again, type in the word now and return and tab. And the end date, same date. We go to click on the date due cell one more time. And in the calc method, we're going to select MD, which is the number of days remaining between the two dates if we ignore months and years. And this value should only ever be between 0 and 31. So to finish this off, I'm going to type in another ampersand and then a space and shift quote one more time and space days with a closing shift quote. And then I'm going to press return. And that worked. Let's just make the cell a little bit wider so we can read it on one line. So on this first line, we have zero years, 
one month and 11 days until we hit that date due of March 22nd, 2023. Now let's think about this. So today is February 11th. So February 11th to March 11th is one month. And then 11 plus 11 days is 22. So that's working. We can copy that down to the other rows. And again, this is, this is dynamic. So if we open this up tomorrow, it would say one month and 10 days for the first row. That is a really good use of this function. It's a little bit of a complicated formula. As you can see, there's a lot of steps to it. If you're using date diff three different ways, three different calc methods. And then of course you have the ampersand in there appending the text pieces together. And we're also using the now function to get the current date and time. Well, this one went on a little long, but I wanted to make sure I, I covered everything to do with the date diff function. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, date diff is a very useful function, and the examples I showed you should steer you in the right direction to use this function in real world scenarios. Thank you as always for watching. My name is John Martins. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode of Apple a Day. <laughs>